and a sense of ownership of the government programs. Government of Andhra Pradesh considers that APHRD Institute should merge as National Institute of Excellence, dully focusing on modern administrative and management techniques, as also the right mix of service and self-sufficiency. Well-equipped well hostel facility is available at all the centers of APHRDI. AC residential accommodation is available for all the resource persons and the participants at all the centers of APHRDI. APHRDI is one of few ATIs in the countries to have national knowledge network facility. This enabled us to establish instantaneous video link for effective interactive sessions with about 1,600 national institutions all over the country. APHRDA has so far facilitated eight international presentations from US, Estonia, China, Sri Lanka, and England. APHRDA has completed 746 programs since its inception and trained nearly 69,736 employees. APHRDA has so far completed 240 online knowledge sharing sessions from 22nd April 2020 onwards with the participation of nearly 1 lakh employees. APHRDA has conducted first bell program, Government of Kerala Initiative, and has received a record views of more than 1 lakh. A number of training programs of APHRDA are being supported by Department of Personal and Training, BOPT, Government of India. The institute has so far facilitated training and state exposure for 81 officers of Central Secretariat from Government of India in the last four years. This is done in six batches of training. Senior functionaries of Indian Foreign Service have also been attached to APHRDA for their state exposure. Training programs of IAS provisionals allotted to AP state are regularly being conducted at APHRDA. APHRDA has also facilitated the conduct of state attachment of civil service officers from Haryana as a part of Bharat Darshan. Government of India have initiated a unique program called Ek Bharat Stressed Bharat for facilitating officers from two states to spend considerable time in both these states. APHRDA has paired with Punjab in this regard during 1920. APHRD has completed capacity building program on Tithli Cyclone project in collaboration with AP State Disaster <laughs> Management Authority and UNDP. APHRD has also conducted post-disaster need assessment study on flooding in Godavari River with particular reference to East Godavari district. APHRD has also completed a unique 15 days induction training program for usually impaired and deaf and dumb categories of employees belonging to different departments. This is supported by DOPT, Government of India. APHRD has completed DTS training to 424 identified resource persons and coordinator for Animal Husbandry Department. A total number of 2,400 distinguished resource persons from different parts of the country have made presentations at APHRDI. The details of their resource persons are available in the website www aphrdi.ap.gov.in. APHRD has evolved the practice of providing internship to college students in different streams. For the year 2020-21, Bitsbilani, Rajasthan has deputed 30 students to APHRDI under a practical school program. This has, this has recently concluded. Center for Sustainable Goals. APHRDI in association with UNICEF Hyderabad Field Office has set up a center for sustainable development goals in January 2008 in its campus at Bapatla. In the current year, CSDG Center is pursuing BRR activities under goal number 11 with support of UNICEF. In addition, this is in addition to promoting other sustainable development goals through the appropriate capacity building efforts. UNICEF has sanctioned one more project called Child Friendly Social Governance. By capacity building and strengthening of gram panchayat volunteers and all over the local other stakeholders towards child friendly local governance and building of resilience of local governance institutions to help mitigate the adverse impact of emergencies. As part of this project, APHRD has completed TOT for district level officials 
of five major departments. We are also proposing to conduct four day program for mandal level officials and GP level programs for five districts, Gunturu, Krishna, Kadapa, Anantpur, and Chitur during November, December. Ministerial Hygiene Management Working Committee has been constituted by APHRDA with technical support from UNICEF. This committee is unique in South, South India, has uh, members from all the major line departments. As per the rec recommendations of MHM com Working Committee, Srimati Arunada, uh, Anuradha Madam, Principal Secretary, WD and CW has issued a GO notifying Working Committee in Andhra Pradesh. This GO enables the with support from UNICEF Hyderabad Field Office with all line departments for effective implementation of various programs, policies and guidelines related to MHM towards creating a safe, supportive and health environment for women and adults and goals to maintain MHM with dignity and privacy. Now, I, it's my happy to introduce Dr. Krishna Mohan, IAS retired, former additional chief secretary and financial commissioner revenue government of Haryana. He has more than 37 years of rich experience in all aspects and crucial sectors of public administration. As an officer of Indian Administrative Service, Haryana Cadre, 1977 batch, with multiple core competencies in a complete range of sectors and departments such as rural and urban development, infrastructure development, housing, tourism, revenue, disaster management, industry and commerce, regulation and enforcement of urban planning, home, state excise and sales tax, health law, administration of justice, social welfare, education, project formulation, public distribution, agriculture, forest, cooperation, financial management, information and public relations, and grievance redressal, labor, marketing of agriculture produced through several key appointments in the state of Haryana, and the Union Territory of Chandigarh, the capacity of the head of the department, managing director, or administrative secretary. Some of the challenging assignments were Home Secretary, Chandigarh, and Deputy Commissioner come Estate Officer, Chandigarh Administration. He has been certified as recognized trainer in e-governance at national level by NEGD. He has also been certified as national trainer on ethics and values in public governance by Department of Personal and Training, Government of India. Now I request Sal to give presentation on pandemic's need of psychosocial care. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, am I visible and my audio is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, so I welcome all the participants and I understand there are more than 350 participants at the moment from the government of Andhra Pradesh. And uh, well, at the outset, I must say that Andhra Pradesh, I have always held this state government in very high esteem because the officers from here are highly intelligent, very responsive, very participative. And it's always a great pleasure to interact with them through the auspices of APHRDI. So I'm thankful to the APHRDI and the former director, Sri Chakrapani ji, and uh, Bharati ma'am, as well as all the senior officers of APHRDI for uh, having given me another opportunity to interact with officers of Andhra Pradesh government. So today's presentation is on a topic which is, of course, topical. It's a buzzword. It's a sunrise area and very important to every one of us and particularly the government servants. So the topic is about psychosocial care. Uh, I have divided my presentation into three parts. The first part, we will devote some time on understanding what is psychosocial care. Well, many of you must already be knowing about it, but even for the sake of nostalgia, I'm going to repeat it. So first part is regarding psychosocial care, what it is about. The second part of my presentation would be to see what are the measures that need to be taken for providing psychosocial care to the vulnerable group of people. So that is the second part. And last part, I'm going to devote some 
time on the lifestyle changes that need to be adopted in the lives of every one of us after COVID-19. So let's let me begin sharing my PPTs and uh, I'm going to ask you whether you are able to see my PPTs or not. So uh, let me just uh, start it. So are you able to see my uh, slides on the on your screens? No? No, sir. Yes. No, sir. OK, yes, sir. just a minute. Let me, let me again try this. Sometimes uh, it, it does create a difficulty, but then I'm sure uh, things will be sorted out. Yeah, just a minute. <laughs> Yeah, can you see it now? Sir, your desktop is visible. <laughs> I don't know what is happening last time. Uh, my yeah, now presentation is visible, sir. Yes, sir, now it is visible. Yes. Yes. Sir. It's absolutely clear. Yes. Other participants. Clear, sir. Okay. So let me begin with psychosocial support system or psychosocial care, which is required. So at the beginning, kindly see the slide: psychosocial support system is one type of intervention that is required and it is an intervention of psychotherapy. So basically psychology and therapy, when they combine together, then it is one of the forms of psychotherapy is giving psychosocial support or psychosocial care to the vulnerable people who are affected by different types of traumas. It can be pandemics, it can be anything else. So that social, please understand this. It refers to a close connection between the psychological aspect of human experience and the social experience. So it is made up of both the things, psychological and social. So it's a close connection between the psychological aspect and the social aspect. So then let us see what is psychosocial support. So it is a continuous support you know, which actually leaves an impact or influences individual and the social environment in which people live. All of us live in a social environment and there are people surrounding us. There are family members, there are friends, there are neighbors and so on. Now, psychosocial support system is something which influences both individuals as well as the social environment in which we all live and we benefit from the support which is offered by the caregivers, the family members, the friends, the neighbors, teachers, health workers, everyone. So that is the psychosocial support and it extends to care and support that is offered by specialized psychological and social services also. So one type of care is given by people surrounding us, our relatives, our caregivers, our family members, our friends, that is our social circle. But it also extends to specialized psychological and social services so that our, our psychosocial well-being is improved and a better sense of self and community tolerance and acceptance takes place. So please understand, psychosocial support includes both people who are surrounding us in the social environment, the support which they give, and similarly the support which is given by specialized psychological and social services. So that is psychosocial support. Now psychosocial well-being, it takes place by two means. One is psychological effect. So you, we affect different 
the levels of functioning including which are cognitive so cognitive is what Percept perception and memory as well as thoughts and learning emotions behavior that is psychological effect and what is the social effect social effect as i told you is relationship family community networks cultural traditions economic status all these things are taken care of in the social effect please understand your position your rank your economic power does not have any effect it is your relationship which are the most important these things are all secondary how rich you are or how uh, what kind of position you are occupying it is all sub sub subsidiary secondary the most important thing in our life is what kind of relationships we have with our our known people our people who are surrounding us so relationship acquires a very important position like relationship with our parents relationship with our friends with our colleagues with our teachers and so on so now let's see the relationship which i was talking about between psychology and so psychology things deals with mind thoughts emotions feelings and behaviors and social things is interaction and with others you go in the evening to meet your friends colleagues that is a social thing the environment in which you live again a social thing tradition rules and tasks these are social aspects and both of these things interact with each other psychology interact with social social interacts with psychology so that is why psycho social care has become extremely important because it takes care of both psychological aspect as well as social aspect now let us identify some of the psycho social issues depression if there is a death in family if something has gone wrong in this we are we have lost lot of money we lead into depression so psychosocial issues are depression anxiety grief financial issues insurance issues substance abuse sometimes loss of independence housing change shift of the house crime abuse neglect social isolation someone is ostracized from the society that is social isolation negative mechanisms and mental symptoms or pre existing systems so mentally also if you have one has a symptom it is also a psychosocial issue so psychosocial issues are closely related to the mental situation also so these are the psychosocial issues now all of you must be aware about the maslow pyramid so the entire you know the needs of human being they are summed up in the maslow pyramid so this is the basis for all psychosocial support in that is intervention in emergency so the human needs pyramid or the maslow pyramid is the basic fundamental structure which actually gives rise to the needs of the human beings so kindly see that because it's a very important pyramid many of you might have already done it but for others who have not done it i am going to just delineate this thing so the needs of a human being what are they number one physiological i will explain every one of them physical safety third is love belonging affection fourth is your self as and fine last is your self actualization your understanding what you are who you are so these are the needs and hierarchy of needs it is called so let us understand the five levels of maslow pyramid first was physiological needs so these are needs for human survival air food water sex sleep let me ask you one question interesting question and i'll give the answer myself nature gives everything air water food food grains fruits vegetables 
it gives us free of cost have we ever realized how much of air if it is you know the oxygen that we get from nature it is all free but if you go to a hospital to purchase oxygen you will have to pay money for that so it does not come free of cost you have to pay money so oxygen which is given to us free of cost by nature if one survives up to the age of 65 years do you have any idea how much oxygen in rupee terms does nature gives to each one of us if we survive up to the age of 65 years and nature doesn't ask for any consideration it doesn't ask for any money well scientists have calculated that with every breath of air you get oxygen inside and the amount of oxygen you get from nature if you survive up to the age of 65 years comes to rupees 0.5 crores that much is the amount of oxygen that is given by nature to free of cost so this is one of our physiological needs and we don't appreciate what is being given by nature so air food water sex sleep these are physiological needs second needs. we want that ourselves and our family should be protected security law and order stability fear psychosis should not be there that is the second need the third is love and belongingness so the need for interpersonal relationship motivates behavior such as friendship with our friends trust receiving and giving ethics about giving ethics is also giving there is only one condition when you give it should not be with any consideration it should be without any consideration taking when you receive something it should be done with an attitude of gratitude so love from parents love from relations love from friends that also is a third need of a the fourth is self esteem so esteem for oneself dignity for oneself inter independence for oneself and the desire for respect from others all of us want that our colleagues they should respect us so that is the fourth need of a human being the fifth is of course it is the last thing and you know that is our understanding realization self fulfillment or personal potential realization that is self actualization now normally some people also say that self actualization comes from once you understand why you have come on this earth what is the purpose of this your your you are being born on this earth it is with a purpose it is not without any purpose so when you understand that this is the purpose for which you have come on this earth then you actually achieve self actualization so these are the five levels of maslow pyramid these are also given in the following manner so levels of psychosocial and humanitarian support that is required in that pyramid of intervention so five levels we i gave you now what are the types of intervention which are required for a human being i'm slowly moving towards the measures that are required but these are the broad measures required by every human being because there are five needs so what are the kind of intervention we are all of you can intervene help out people who are suffering who are vulnerable from different types of traumas which includes covid 19 so first is basic services and security at the bottom we need oxygen we need water we want a stay a shelter these are the basic services and security second is community and family support we like that the social community surrounding us and our family they should support us the third is more focused but non specialized support and fourth is specialized support we'll list all the four of them these are the four interventions from where i'm going to draw out the different measures that are required for psychosocial intervention psychosocial support psychosocial care so the first one basic services and security so the base of the pyramid includes basic facilities shelter house water health care and safety needs every one of us wants these things then response should also include the cultural and social consideration that is protection of our dignity you can say some form ego but ego is slightly more than dignity dignity is 
something less than that a minimum thing if ego exceeds a certain limit then it becomes harmful but a certain amount of self respect or dignity is also something which is a part of the security and basic services and also strength of support from community community means your neighbors your friends your relatives so that also is support you want then providing basic services like health services if you fall sick then there must be health service and psychological well being of persons affected in different traumatic situations so this these are the basic services number 1 the base of the pyramid number 2 community and family supports so the affected population also needs affected population it can be anyone it can be from covid it can be from sars it can be from plague it can be from it can be from anything it can be terrorism attack all these things lead to a traumatic condition for the human being and therefore psychosocial intervention becomes necessary so the affected population needs psychosocial support to restore restore normalcy in their lives in order to maintain a good psychological and social health so psychosocial support also means community support and family support so helping those affected by the loss of loved ones those people who have lost their relatives out of pandemic covid we must come to their rescue and help them out to develop mechanisms because it leads to a great amount of grief third repair the family and community networks so the relations between the human beings and within the family if the father is not talking to the son or to the daughter they are repairing those family relationships networks similarly community networks that have broken down many houses it happens so that also is a psychosocial support and family reunification can be included as activity supposing during a con the sons have been lost so family reunification bringing them back to the family or the son has been estranged he has gone married according to his wishes and he doesn't want to talk to the family again it's a traumatic condition so family reunification is also included in the psychosocial support third focused approach but non specialized so targets a small group of the affected population with some additional support supposing there are 1 lakh of people but there are some very very vulnerable people so we have to concentrate on small groups and give them some additional support so that whatever has happened they come out of that that disorder so please understand the psychosocial support is for everyone but part of that population some of them really affect much more harshly for example my for example affected by aids there are so many categories which are much more so they to there you have to concentrate your efforts towards such isolated groups so individual group family interventions for example social and life programs for survivors of gender based violence so if there is a gender based violence domestic violence or violence on account of castes and otherwise then you have to concentrate special efforts to bring them out of the traumatic conditions that is a focused effort but non specialized and focused effort is also generally provided by trained and supervised staff and people in need if they receive no service at all at this level then the recovery takes a very long time so people need to be immediately targeted such people who are actually subject to special kind of traumatic experience gender based violence they must be concentrated specially your effort should be such that you identify such people and concentrate your efforts towards them otherwise they will go deep into the depression it will be very difficult to come out of that and lastly is the specialized services so some people out of that population care for severe psychological and mental disorders 
who mental condition equilibrium has been affected psychological condition has been affected so this percentage of people require specialized services so this includes professional psychological or psychiatric support here ordinary support non specialized support will not help you psychologist or psychiatrist for giving them professional services and individual families who actually experience this kind of crisis or strong situation they must be provided with specialized services and people who must have basic understanding the ordinary people can't help this has to be done by specialized who have an understanding of mental health issues as well as psychological disorders and sometimes this support will also require society interventions so social interventions have to be coupled with this kind of specialized services to bring those people out of the traumatic zone so these are the four things now from mental health and psychosocial support which is the mhpss mental health and psychosocial support who are the people who need to be benefited out of this the beneficiaries number one people and children who are most at risk so people will include certain things and i'll tell you those categories some of the categories which are at risk and then children pregnant women those older people students suspended from school homeless people migrants socio economically disadvantaged either on account of income or on account of castes then former detainees who have been detained by law then those who are unaccompanied or separated from their children then people in need of mental you know recovery health support these survivors stressful events or trauma those who have survived but after this survival they have gone into a deep trauma so such people also a very very set of population who need to be immediately given attention and then those survivors of gbw gb gbv is called gender violence. so those who are survivors of gender based violence or sexual abuse or torture they are also important then people with physical and mental disability who are having mental disorders then those who have been wounded from the war from the war they also are out of this beneficiary and then lastly the, the refugees the asylum seekers and you know they idps i call is a part of education and this is called international uh, development program and migrants so this is the total beneficiary population from who need require support from mhpss that is mental health and psychosocial support now what is the type of psychosocial support awareness information on the prevalence family situation because of psychosocial distress so be always be contacted and they should be made aware so important thing and pass on awareness information on the prevention of family separation or psychosocial distress so information is very important second is skills so impart them skills to keep them busy and earn a living also because those people who are sometimes economically very weak they require certain skills so give them skills activities competencies so that they remain busy they have a social respect and economically they become better and third is training so vocational training you are all aware of sewing cooking computer hair dressing classes and so on then recreational activities you see the important thing is they must understand that they have come on this earth with a special purpose they otherwise they will go into depression they will be socially ostracized you must keep them busy in some activity or the other and make them aware of what are the important information and the threats on account of different situations so dancing 
playing cards. These are all recreational. So keep them busy in recreational activities. Then community-based initiatives, NGOs, social groups, which are in which the entire community comes together. Then psychological first aid in emergency. So whenever there is an emergency, give them psychological phase. So some counselor must go and counsel. That is psychological first aid. Then contributing to the reunification of separated families. Now, a very interesting in, in example. There is a called Ghaziabad near Delhi. Now in this district, what happened? A new superintendent of police was posted. Now he said, if I follow the line which was told by my predecessors, two, three years will pass, I will go away without leaving an impact. He said, I must do something for the people of Ghaziabad. So he said, instead of only concentrating on law and order and crime control, I must do more than that. So what he did, he launched a program for unifying sons and daughters who were taken away or lured by people and taken away separated from their families. You know, there are people who indulge in child trafficking. So there were many people whose families, whose children were taken away by luring them to distant places in the country and no one knew about it. And the family was in great distress. This superintendent of police formed about 75 teams of police constables and sent them after a certain age, taking evidence where those children might have gone. And from one place to another, ultimately they were able to reach those places where those 75 children have been, you know, kept. They were killed. People were asking them to beg, to give, pick up garbage and all those kind of things. They were, the family were distressed. So he recruited teams, brought those children back on the eve of Diwali and it was the biggest gift given to the family of those people. So this is the way, you know, you contribute to the reunification of separated families. Then assistance in providing appropriate mourning rituals. So mourning rituals, one has to have money for that. Rituals are there. Sometimes even people don't have money for cremating their loved ones. So coming to the assistance of such people is also is a kind of social, psychosocial support. Then supporting parental programs. So such programs which are, it goes, goes on, the parental programs, try to bring the parents and the students together, the children together. So parental programs also supporting them is also one of the important things. Then of course, storytelling, focused groups, all these things are also you know, structured kind of psychosocial support. Then formal and non-formal education activities, women's group, you clubs, livelihood, economic empowerment activities, gymnastic, sports activities, hiking, archery, football, volleyball, all these kind of sports activities also help people to come out of the trauma. They stop thinking about the trauma. And then structured and specialized services, of course, they, sometimes the situation may be such where you have to provide that. Uh, am I audible? Everything is clear? Sir, audible. Okay. okay. And the PPT is also clear? Yes, sir. Okay. In terms of psychosocial support, these are the this points which I will give. These are the importance, number one. It helps prevention from or separation or violence. So if you give the support, then the family which is about to separate, it stops separating. Similarly, you prevent violence. If you give timely psychosocial support, risk is brought down. The capacity is then to provide psychosocial support to children. Then achieve and social stability of the affected groups, helping people in coming out, recovery process, 
strengthening social networks self confidence is also boosted and educating people how to protect themselves and others from stress and then a powerful factor helps restore the ability to face disasters if you give timely psychosocial support it helps preventing the people uh, from different kind of disasters meeting them and so on so the principles for promoting mental health and psychosocial well being these are some of the principles treat all people with dignity and respect and support reliance respond to people in distress in a humane and support you know for that i i always say that people we have need to be ethical ethics are you aware of that when you start acting upon the value system then you are behaving ethically so the important thing in ethics is that don't only think about yourself think else in this society who needs your support so it is called a journey from i to v i capital letter don't only think about i start thinking about everyone so it's a journey from i to v which is called an ethical journey and you know there is a word in english which starts with the letter i it's called illness i double l n e double s replace i with v what does it become wellness illness changes to wellness the moment you change from i to v so respond to people in distress in a humane and supportive way that is the ethical journey provide information about the various services which are there and their legal rights and their obligations they should be educated then provide psycho education and use appropriate language in explaining that you should also prioritize the protection and psycho social support for children particularly children in those children who are separated or unaccompanied with special needs and strengthen the family support then identify different sets of people with someone will be needing a mental support health support someone will be needing psychological support every person has got a special needs identify everyone according to their needs and make service accordingly to ensure adequate support then for people with severe disorders and do not start psycho therapeutic treatment that need follow up when follow up is impossible don't start a medication or treatment when you are not very sure whether you will be able to follow it up or not you should start only when you are able to see the results at maximize the participation of affected populations in a humanitarian response so humane ethical value based system is very important actor should reduce the risk of harm so those people who are ethical humanitarian when they come into operation you start helping people being in a humane manner it reduces the risk of harm and developed a layered system of complementary support which meets the needs of different types of people different groups of people so let me now uh, this was about what psychosocial support system is about let me now come to what is the kind of psychosocial support which is needed at the time of afghan so i can you see my ppt is it visible pandemics need of psychosocial care yes sir okay to the traumatic condition created on account of pandemics on the mental health and psychosocial well being now what happens is during trauma the early part of the traumatic you know reaction is different so in the early uh, aftermath the early let me tell you yeah so in the early aftermath of traumatic stressors it is very normal that to be short term reactions so when the pandemic started you know the initial reaction would be definitely be there it would be short term adverse reaction things will cool down after some time but the initial reaction is very very hostile and reaction can be seen as part of the adaptive process 
of moving from survival mode to adjustment. After COVID-19 came, initial thing was whether I will, whether I'm going to. So the initial is survival mode. Later on, over a period of time, you know, I came to know, all right, if I wear a mask, if I have social distancing, then I will be able to deal with this pandemic. So, but the initial reaction is always very, very hostile. There is an adverse reaction whenever there is a pandemic, there is a trauma. But later on, after some time, when they start adopting the new techniques, the new normal, then the reaction becomes less. But what happens is, please, please understand this. Exposed people are expected to be resilient and have effective coping strategy. The majority of the people have this. They can cope up with the strategy and do not develop any mental, long-term mental health problems. Majority of the population of this country also were able to meet with COVID pandemic normally and not have any long-term mental health problems. But, but certain part of the population which included individuals, families, communities are become more vulnerable after an exposure. So, so please understand, even if 90% of the people are able to easily adjust to the pandemic trauma, but there will always be a set of population who will not be in a position to adjust and they are going to be the vulnerable group of people who need to be looked after. So a number of factors contributes to this vulnerability. If you one is having a pre-existing mental health condition, supposing one is already having a mental health condition or some psychological problem, then the stress is going to be during and after the disaster. So the quality of mental health and psychological services is very necessary for those people who are already suffering from some mental or psychological problem. And you know the problems regarding possible consequences of COVID-19, and these are very alarming. WHO in 2020 year said the possible consequences of COVID-19 on mental health and psychosocial well-being is very alarming. You know, COVID-19, we were all put inside the houses. We could not move out, and the fear of death was looming large over us. We could not even go out to purchase things from the market. We could not go to the offices. Those who were having small homes, they were confined within their homes. They were literally becoming insane. But they were not able to meet people. So this is the kind of situation which was created by COVID-19. More about it, we'll talk about in the last section when I'm going to tell you what are the lifestyle changes which have become necessary after COVID-19. So therefore, emerging data show that if measures are not taken, suitably. If timely measures are not implemented, COVID will result in a major mental health crisis. So therefore, you, with all humility at my command, I will respectfully submit to you that if there are such people who are suffering from traumatic conditions, before they get worse, try to catch them and ensure that the mental health problem does not take place. You know what happened COVID-19 everywhere? Chandigarh, you could city. And yet what happened? After the conditions were relaxed, people came out in captivity. They came out of the markets, the hotels, the restaurants, the cinema houses. Without any precaution, they started moving here and there. And the result was that the number of cases of COVID started rising. So, because people were so fed up of staying inside their houses, that was leading to a mental health crisis. And the same situation had earlier happened from previous epidemics also, SARS, MERS, and Ebola. Same situation was there, which is now in the case of COVID. So from these studies, we can have distinguished certain findings. Now, national surveys report a high level of distress amongst population of affected countries. So those countries where the this COVID-19 has affected in a great way, so high level of distress has been noticed there. For example, 
China, Iran, United States, the rates of distress are as high as 35% China, 40% Iran, and 55% in the United States of America. That is United Nations report of 2020. This is, you know, distress which has been noticed in these countries and United States to be very developed countries. The maximum amount of distress has been noticed there. So the most vulnerable to this, you know, are healthcare workers, especially those in the high risk zones. So all those healthcare workers in the health department and otherwise who are in the high risk zone, they are subjected to a great mental stress. And those people similarly who are in quarantine, they also have this kind of stress. Or those moral dilemmas or stigma and discrimination. What can be the stigma? People suffering from people suffering from various kinds of diseases. So they are already having or sex workers or who are those who are transgenders. So these are people already having a stigma. They the psychosocial symptoms are much, much larger and they need to be immediately taken care of. So the spectrum of mental health problems you know, which they suffer, these vulnerable groups. What are the kind of problems? Depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is D, moral injury, and burnout, exhausted. These are the mental problems being faced by the community. And people who have contracted some epidemic disease are another risk group. Supposing someone already has an ep epidemic disease, then again it's a risk area. It's a risk group. It is likely to be affected even greater detail with mental disorder. This COVID-19, let me make it very, very clear with all humility. Myself, I have witnessed how people have actually not taken precautions and they have died. And going to hospital is not easy nowadays because the infrastructure is not there so much. And then no vaccine is there. Or it is better that one does not contract any disease during this COVID-19. So those who are already having a disease are another risk group. And you know what had happened at the earlier stage of the earlier diseases like SARS, Ebola, they suffered from such problems, depression anxiety, panic attacks, suicidal tendencies, delirium, psychic symptoms, they were all suffering from this. And mental health problems were also tracked among those who survived these disasters. So those who have survived, even they have huge mental health problems. Because what has happened, even those who have survived, they can again contract the disease. I know many people after two, three months, they again became COVID-19 COVID positive. So those who come out of this disease also are having that traumatic experience. Now, 25% of SARS survivor, this, they suffered from this kind of traumatic experiences and 15.6% of worsened depression. Similarly, the MERS survivors reported some lower quality of life so they said that our life has become miserable now in comparison to those who were directly, indirectly affected. So this happens and increased rates of suicides were reported amongst the older people because older people are very much at risk, which makes the group especially vulnerable. So the older people, those suffering already from diseases, they become vulnerable. And people who have experienced quarantine, who have in course in quarantine period, and social isolation are also risk of developing mental health. So these are the people who are likely to develop mental health problems. This is another area who are at risk. You know that people had to travel from southern part of the country to Bihar and UP. They walked, not, no help came, and ultimately they were at great risk mental health. So the mental health problem, because economic hardship was there, they did not have money to eat food. 
So these things, you know, migrant workers is also susceptible. Happens, there are stigmatization and discrimination towards people who have contracted the virus. Once you get contracted, then everyone moves away. Nobody comes near them. And those families who have lost their relations because of pandemics, they are also reported as a cause of mental health problem. So if one loses a family member on account of pandemic, he also runs into the chances of developing mental health problem or those who are discriminated in the society or stigmatized in the society. Now, some of the authors have described the situation involving mass fatalities, that is mass deaths. So they have described the survivors' fears and feelings if mass fatalities. So there is a grief, distress due to the loss of family members, loss of friends, which sometimes coincides with material losses also. So you lose a lot of property, material losses, you also lose your family friends, family members. And these, there are also more subtle and sometimes intangible losses like people lose faith in God. They say that why God has done this to us wrong in my life? Why God? So they start losing faith in God. They start losing meaning of life. They said, why this has been done to us? We have not committed any sin. So this kind of also fear, feeling, mental disorder takes place. People stop, stop believing in God. Then people start having practical fears. That is, what are the practical fears? Please don't understand. Supposing the husband dies, then the widow becomes the head of the household. So there is a fear. My family member is gone. How will I cope up with the family now? So new roles have been have been taken over by these people who have survived the epidemic. People have been lost. So the head of the family, the karta of the family has gone. So now the widow has to assume a new role for the family. Or similarly, a widower who has lost his wife. So widower has to look after the children. So the role reversal has taken place. The role which we assigned to the wife, wife has gone. Now the widower has to take it. So again, this is a sphere or feeling which takes place after pandemic. Then there are things that it can happen again. Even if I have survived this time, but it can happen. Or my other family members can also die. So that kind of always looms large inside our minds. And then there is a personal fear of dying loss. Fear of the unknown or fear of facing God. So is there. Then feeling of loneliness, abandonment. This has happened. We have seen it with our eyes, what has happened in COVID-19. And, you know, it is very common for the survivors to feel that family members and friends have abandoned them. Many of us, you know, we keep ourselves away. We don't even talk to such people. So that is where the mental health problems arise. Those people who have contracted COVID-19. So it's a very difficult time which happens. And then fear of forgetting. Being forgotten. The people will forget us. There is also an anger towards these which is taken out on family members or close friends. Why do you go away? So there is an anger towards that. If he had survived, I would not have to face this kind of situation. So there is an anger against the deceased also, who has passed away, and which is taken out on other family members or close friends. And then sometimes there is a feeling also. Supposing he says, I had taken him to hospital beforehand, probably he would have survived. So sometimes this happens after the death of a loved one and you start feeling guilt that if I had tried more, probably I would have saved his life. So that guilt comes. Sometimes shame comes. So shame what happens if your loved one dies and, you know, the circumstances surrounding the death of that person, you know, that leads to shame about the conditions in which family is left following disaster. So they say that now, we were having such high economic status. Now suddenly our bread winner has gone. Bread earner has gone. So this shame comes. They, you 
stop interacting with people because you feel that now your economic condition has come down after the death of that person. So the shame feeling also. So psychosocial vulnerability, let me devote some time to this, that who are these people who are vulnerable? So the number of people who become sick and die and vast economic losses associated with it lead to a high psychosocial risk. We have already done that. And therefore, a rational approach to health care implies recognizing different types of vulnerability amongst population groups. So we must understand who are the people who are vulnerable according to gender, according to age, economic, according to socioeconomic status. We must have a rational approach to identify such people according to this. Don't generalize everything because different people stand different type of vulnerability. And there are also occupational risks. For example, members of the response teams, the, the team which is the front team which is looking after these things, they run into a great risk. Frontline workers. And it should be pointed out that the most vulnerable groups are those that have the greatest difficulty rebuilding their means of subsidy. Now, please that because of this COVID-19, the economy is in shatter, completely shattered. People have lost their jobs, their occupations, their living. They are not able to earn the living. And therefore, they are one of the very vulnerable groups. That includes migrants also. They did not have any money. So economy has gone for a nose dive. The service and social support has gone away. And this catastrophe, we start hating this COVID-19 and also the country which brought this COVID-19, that is China. So what happens, this is the kind of feeling which comes uh, after the, the pandemic. Then impact on mental health. So epidemics are actually health emergencies in which human life is threatened. And there are many people who become sick, many people who are dead. So local resources are generally under a lot of strain. And community safety and normal functioning also becomes. So we have to, every one of us has to take a lead. Whether we are not in health department, whether we are in education, whether we are in cooperation or any other department. We have to see that these aspects to the COVID-19 or for that matter any pandemic. We must become change agents. We must come to the rescue of such people. So outside assistance sometimes is necessary also. But what happens is that epidemics are actually human tragedies. And therefore, the grief and psychological consequences must be addressed as quickly as possible. And this actually leads to psychosocial disturbance, which can exceed the population's capacity to handle. So therefore, intervention by the government servants become absolutely necessary. And then all of us must recognize and we should educate our family and, and our subordinates that here a time has come when everyone has to contribute its effort towards providing psychosocial stress support to the people. And the entire population sees it, it goes under stress. So there is a increase of the psychological disorders. And you know what happens is that this manifestation is in a practically one third to one half of the population may go through this kind of thing. So vulnerability of the people becomes much more. Therefore, intervention by us it becomes absolutely necessary. But of course, as we pointed out, all the psychological and social problems cannot be described as diseases. They are normal reactions. Well, if we lose some money, if we lose a, a relation, there is a trauma. So these are normal reactions. Don't think that these are part of the epidemic or they are, these are not diseases. These are only abnormal situations and we are reacting very normally in those abnormal situations. And the effects on the mental health are usually much more amongst those populations which is living under difficult conditions, who have limited resources and access to social and health services. So labor colonies, those living in jugis, those living in, in such situations where they are not able to earn a meal a day. So there the mental health problems are likely to be. So the mental health care becomes extremely important. So experience has shown that mental health plans 
cannot be limited to just expanding and improving the specialized services. Rather, the shift towards a much broader area of expertise. For example, for example, emphasis can be played on relationship between mental health services and various activities. So, mental health services on one side, humanitarian and social assistance should go side by side. Counseling. So, counseling for the population and at risk groups. We must indulge in a dialogue, a counseling of such people who are at risk. I told you, you see, let me tell you very clearly, relationship and communication, they are the two most important things to people out of the traumatic experience, experience recording as per the pandemic. So, never, never remove the communication should be always there. And you must take care that relationship is established with every such person. So counseling, mass communication is absolutely necessary. And you should be able to communicate them well, absolutely correctly, so that they understand that, you know, let me let me tell you one small example. Whereas we have to tell the people that uh, they have to take things, but let me give one example where, not only, you know, we do, shouldn't tell a lie, telling a lie is unethical, isn't it? But certain times, even it becomes ethical. Supposing someone has got a terminal disease, doctor, and the doctor knows that he is not going to survive more than two to three months, then the doctor is not going to tell him that you will die after two to three months. He will say probably, no, no, you will be all right. Take these medicines, you will come out of it. Because he wants that the next two, three months, whatever his life he has got, at least he should have that life in a peaceful manner. So he will not tell a truth. He will probably tell a lie. But lie will again become ethical. So communication to boost the, the, the levels of energy of that person is absolutely necessary. And therefore, one some kind of counseling is absolutely required. And sometimes it has been recognized that some of the catastrophes, you know, prolonged cares also becomes necessary. So sometimes you have to take prolonged care also. It may not be only for once, twice, thrice, maybe more than that. So therefore, there is a need for medium and long-term psychological recovery plans also. And, you know, in terms of care, there are three time periods which are very important. Before, during, and after the You must identify these three times, three periods, with four categories of people. Who are those four categories? Number one, the sick. Number two, those who had the disease, but they have survived. Those who are not sick, but could get sick. There is a chance of their getting sick. And who have experienced major losses, like death or illness amongst the family members. So there are chances, they are at vulnerable group, because they are grieving the death of their relations. And they can also get sick. So this is the third group. And fourth is those who are looking after these patients, those people, the emergency response team. So the frontline. So these are the four groups of people. You must take special care and identify the pre, during, and post period. What are the different types of stresses that come as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, especially? So, United Nations, WHO, actually, they brought out many such uh, important information regarding the stressors. So, I will tell you some of the stressors for different categories of people. So, let us see what are the kind of stressors which happen. General population, that is the first category. Now, general population, what are the physical stressors? General population, what are the physical stressors? Number one. Threat of COVID-19 with potential of severe consequences, going to a ventilator and ultimately death. That is the first stressor. That whether I'm 19 or not, I have lost many IS officers, friends who have not survived, who have gone on to ventilator and then never came out. 
to the threat the fear lurking in mind is the first physical stressor the second those who have been tested coronavirus positive that is the second stress that i have become positive i don't know what will happen so the first category is that whether i will remain safe or not whether i will contract or not so those who are contracted number 3 having covid and related somatic symptoms also so without not only covid 19 but other symptoms also because what happens is covid 19 aggravates many other symptoms and vice versa old age for example it if the old age then covid 19 is is going to you know aggravate the situation and fourth health condition risk for complication and death so these are the physical stresses what about psychological stresses physical stress whether i am going to contract covid 19 fear of contracting 19 lack of social support due to physical distancing measures so again it's a, it's a very very trouble something you know psychologically if we are not able to sit with our friends our family members we have to sit at a distance we have to wear the mask we have to maintain social distancing we cannot go to the market in the car also only two to three people can sit that also you know nowadays at earlier only two. so this social distancing also is a psychological stress third when you are lonely in the family or in quarantine so the psychological stress fourth is fundamental right of move you cannot move out of the house so freedom of movement has been curtailed that again is a deprivation it's a psychological stress fifth dissatisfaction with policies and strategies implemented by the governments so many people criticize that the policies and strategies implemented by the government of india they were not at all good so they were dissatisfied that is also a psychological stress you cannot go to the barber you cannot go to the beauty shop you cannot go to the swimming pool you cannot go to the hotels you cannot go to the bars so those kind of dissatisfaction with the policies then not able to mourn grief related many people who died out of covid 19 their bodies were not handed over to the relations they were not even allowed to see the cremations being carried out and they were carried out by the government authorities so that also is psychological stress that at the last you know the stage i am not even able to see my my relations body and it is it is cremated by those people without even showing it to me and then those who are survivors they have a guilt feeling sometimes you know someone else passes away and said i have survived what purpose now i have got he has passed away so the guilt feeling comes then third social stress so social stress what happens this is a change of life circumstances they may be a quarantine if you are traveled internationally then there will be quarantine then loss of loved ones this is social stress sometimes there is a stigma you know outside the house the health authorities came and put a sign board that here is a patient of covid 19 that's a stigma discrimination then lockdown resulted in economic losses the job losses that social stress then the opportunity to practice spiritual relations rituals so now you cannot one was not allowed to go for prayers in a masjid or in a in a a, in a my temple or in any other things so all these spiritual rituals they were stopped that also led to social stress and no opportunities to implement culturally appropriate mourning rituals so you could not have your mourning rituals after the death because people were not allowed to sit at one place so similarly uh, the loss of the loved ones again a stress even the marriages number of people were limited again a social stress and so on the second kind of categories which is the vulnerable is the medical staff and other front line people. so let us see what is the physical stress number 1 there was personal safety equipment was not there they were lack for many months the personal safety equipment was not there for the medical staff and the front line personnel so they had run ran into the risk of contracting covid 19 from the affected patients so there was a high exposure to the viral then those 
medical staff, you know, who have tested coronavirus positive. That is a physical stress. Or having COVID and similar symptoms. Or at the end of the day, they become exhausted. Again, it's a physical stress. Because they have to be there. Because the medical facilities, infrastructure facilities in the hospitals were under great stress. We had limited number of people. So they were into so that was a physical stress for these people. The second was psychological stress. So number one was moral dilemmas. Whether I should go and leave, whether I should go there. Moral stress. Exposure to the death of COVID-19 patients. In our front of our eyes, people are dying COVID-19. That is a psychological stress. That someday I may also die like that. Then perceived the lack of social support. Such people were not having the social support. Also people were evading meeting them. Because they could contract this. Then lack of acknowledgement by employers and patients and general public. Sometimes the frontline workers, the, the duties which they were performed, they were not acknowledged by people. Again, it was a psychological stress. Then the social stress. So contact with the families. For You know what happens in PPGI, for example, in Chandigarh? The person who is a frontline worker, he has to stay there. Say for one week duty, then he has to go to quarantine in the PGI itself. He can go and meet the family. So the contact with family members was, a, was totally removed. And he had to stay alone. Then stigma and discrimination. Again, a social stress. And low acknowledgement or appreciation from their employers. Again, a social stress. Third category of people. First was general population. The second was frontline workers. Third was children. What is the physical stress? Physical stress was they could not go out and play. Divert their energy because they had to stay at home. Again, it's for children. They have to see only the TV and the computers. They could not go out and play football or cricket. Then those children who have tested coronavirus positive. And also those who have some symptoms of COVID-19. And their what is the psychological situation? Number one, difficulties related to virtue. So the all the education in the schools shifted from classroom teachings to virtual classroom teachings. Some of them, children, they had difficulties in relating to the virtual classrooms. So that again was a physiological, psychological stress. The second was dysfunctional coping strategies. So online activities have increased so much that the children are not able to cope up with that strategy. And third is distress from medical manipulations related to COVID-19. So that also medical manipulations leads to a lot of psychological stress for the children. Then the social stress on the children. So deprivation of social contacts. So you could not meet their friends. One could not meet one's friends. Sometimes even the isolation from caregivers from parents, from other people, you were put in a room, quarantined. So that was also stress. Social interaction with colleagues, with friends, lack of mental infrastructure. For example, playgrounds, swimming pools, these places you could not visit. So that also was a social stress. And then the fourth category is elderly people. So elderly people are at a great increased risk due to multiple health conditions and chronic diseases. And those who have been tested positive, again, it's a physical stress. Third, COVID-19 and related symptoms, those who are having also. Fourth is, some of the elderly, they did not have the safety equipment in the old person's home, old age homes, they did not have those facilities. So again, it was a physical stress deserted by the parents, by the children. They have to stay in old age homes. Similarly, the psychological was feeling disconnected due to social distancing. So if in the morning, the elderly people used to go with their friends for morning walks. So that social distancing has now stopped their going to the morning walks or going to the park. So the restriction on the moment. Then they start feeling more lonely. But really if the wife has died or the spouse has died, so now suddenly they feel very lonely. The worsening of possible mental conditions because of stress and anxiety related to 
COVID-19. So this is what is happening to elderly. What is the social stress? Social isolation, social marginalization, and lack of social support, and you know, age-related stigma. Stigma. You know, statements which started coming out that those who are old people, they are run into greater risk of contracting COVID-19. So this creates anxiety. You know, people become very, very disturbed. Because I, because suppose it's 60 plus. So the statement was that 60 plus people run into the great danger. So again, it's a social stress. There are forced migrants and other survivors of man-made violence, domestic violence, other things. They are, the physical stressors are physical health problems with previous experience. So those who have had a previous experience, that also leads to physical health problems. Similarly, those who have been tested positive or have some symptom, symptoms of COVID-19. So forced migrants, the major problem was that on the way, they had to travel for days together on the road. They did not have, they did not have any health support. So these people have had a lot of health problems. And those people who have survived domestic violence or man-made violence, they also have under physical stress. Then psychological distress anxiety. What will happen? I have traveled from Kerala to Bihar. I don't have any occupation. How will I feed my family? So this is anxiety. Then worsening of mental health conditions developed because of previous adverse experiences. So those people who have had bad experience earlier, they also have much greater anxiety created due to COVID-19. And what is the social stress? That of course is obvious. Job loss, economic deprivation, hand to mouth, further social marginalization, because you are coming back to the village, people are ostracizing you, re-traumatization in case of imposed quarantine, that in spite of all that, you are also quarantined, so that is even greater trauma. So the importance of offering psychosocial support during COVID-19 cannot be overemphasized, and as the COVID-19 continues to affect both India and the world, so the impact is being felt not only on our health and economy, but also people who are reporting for mental health issues, as I told you, and anxiety, depression, sleep deprivation, appetite disturbances, they have been reported in a great deal in different population groups. All these symptoms are being noticed. And children, elderly people, pregnant women, people with pre-existing illnesses, People living alone and families of those who have died in the COVID-19 are the most visible sections which need support. And similarly, there are those that are already marginalized by the society. For example, those belonging to the weaker castes or weaker sections of the society, they are already require special attention. And then uh, people with disabilities, women, and people from LGBT. Now, LGBT, uh, are you aware? LG is, BT is lesbian, gay, sexual, and transgender. This kind of community also is a community which needs special care. Then medical professionals, organizations, and policymakers can actually play a very great part. And we have seen in COVID-19, uh, it has never happened in this world. It is a health crisis and development crisis. It has started in, well, at the beginning of this year itself, though the major thing started in March, till now no co-vaccine is in sight and we do not know how long it will continue. And millions of people have been impacted by the economic shock. That is the worst thing which has happened. And there are those who are already marginalized, vulnerable, and those, as I told you, that tribes, People working in informal sector, partners, HIV people, LGBT communities, sex workers, disability—they are the population which is the most affected. You need to have special attention to such people. And even before the pandemic, even before the pandemic, these groups already stigma from the society. And therefore, it becomes even more stigma during COVID-19. You must pay attention to these people. And 
in a very unique situation in this world, in India also. And a lot of anxiety and fear is there, which needs to be addressed by all of us. <coughs> and fear of seeking care, the onset of the pandemic has also led to fear of contracting the disease. Now, now the fear is that if I leave the house, I might contract the disease. So people like to stay inside, except those people who have no fear, who go out and then they contract it also. And then people who visit the hospital for pediatric help are now hesitant because of fear of infection. You know, that is why I said in the beginning, don't fall sick during COVID-19. If you fall sick, you will probably not like to go to a hospital because you may contract it. Many of my friends, they went to the hospital on account of some other disease, but they contracted COVID-19 and passed away. So don't fall sick. Bring your immunity levels at a very high level. Maintain social distancing. Always wear mask. Mask is the only thing which is going to make you survive during this pandemic. Now what has happened? Many helplines have come. Some NGOs have come. Governments have introduced helplines. And telemedicine is also taking place. Because OPD in the hospitals has stopped practically. Everything is on through telemedicine now. And people are consulting from their homes online, which is a good thing. In the long run, it is a good thing. And there was a parallel pandemic happening, which was evidenced in a study they conducted. So what was that pandemic? Uh, thing? That was the mental thing. So COVID-19 was pandemic. But because of that pandemic, new things started happening. That is mental thing, extreme anxiety and uh, Clinically depressed people were identified. Suicidal thoughts were there. So please understand one epidemic, one pandemic has led to another pandemic, which is suicidal tendencies, anxiety, mental disorders, and so on. Depression. So when we talk about the clinical syndrome of depression, it means that you have a sustained sadness. What is depression? That you are sad. You don't take interest in activities which were very pleasurable to you at some point of time. And now you don't even feel interested in that. Of those three core systems, if two are consistently present in you, in more than this, then you are depressed. So it is important for people who are well. Get empathy. Empathy is a very important value system. I'm sure you are about what is empathy. Empathy is putting yourself in the shoes of another. Or if you were in his position, how would you have felt? So then that is called empathy. So try to empathize with people, those who are in this vulnerable group. And then destigmatize mental health. So you no stigma should be attached to mental health and you must offer your empathy to them. And we have a lot of work to do actually in destigmatizing the mental health and promoting empathy. Only that is going to help the people. And it is one of the first things that we need to do to respond better and address the needs of marginalized communities, which I have already told you that those people who are already neglected in the society, they need to be looked after. Even more. Stigma is always there, mental health, but it really creates a massive barrier in terms of being able to reach out and speak up. It is a barrier. It creates a barrier, mental health issue. And it is not only unique in India only. It is a challenge everywhere in the world. So let us not be too judgmental and overreactive. And we must give leeway to all such people who are suffering from these things. Let's not be judgmental. Let's not say that I'm not going to talk to him because he is going to go further into depression. So never have a judgmental issue. And whatever has accumulated in their mind of the other person is out of fear only that he will be ridiculed. So realize that you are not struggling alone and you must have empathy, gratitude to give back to those. You know, there are two types of people in this society. Two types. One is called successful people. The other is called significant people. Successful people who take much more from the society and give back much less to the society. But significant people are those who take much less from the society, but give back much more to the society. Try to be a significant person. And COVID-19 is an occasion when you can show being a significant person. 
significant, success will automatically follow you. But don't hanker after success only. You must empathize and help me. This gratitude has been given to us. And always give emotional discount and never be judgmental about such people. So what are the considerations during 19? So WHO has issued a detailed instructions. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of them. Uh, the WHO uh, said in 2020 this year, it said it declared the outbreak of a new coronavirus virus to be a public health emergency of international concern. See the words. COVID-19 was declared by WHO as a public health emergency of international concern. And WHO said that much high risk of COVID-19 spreading to all the countries of the world. In March 2020, WHO made the assessment that COVID-19 has become a pandemic. And WHO and public health authorities around the world are now active to contain this. But this crisis is there throughout the population and the consideration which I'm going to talk about have been actually developed by WHO. So let us see some of the messages. Messages for the general population. What are the things that we can do? What is the psychosocial care or support that we can extend to the general population? You know, we categorize the people, general population, children and elderly and so on. So COVID-19 has a, is likely to affect from many countries and let me refer to people, do not attach disease to any particular caste, creed, ethnicity or nationality because it is going everywhere. And be very empathetic to those who are affected. So that is the general. Then people who are affected have not done anything. So those who are affected by, affected by COVID-19 don't think they have done anything wrong. Actually, they deserve support, compassion and kindness. You know, support, compassion, kindness are values. Values, when you start acting upon you, it said that you are behaving ethical. So be an ethical person during this COVID-19. And do not refer to people with this disease as COVID-19 cases or victims or COVID-19 families or the diseased. So they are people who have COVID-19, people who are being treated for COVID-19, or people who are recovering from COVID-19. And after recovering from COVID-19, their life will go on with their jobs, families, and loved ones. And it is important. Please see this. We must, it is important to separate a person from having an identity defined by COVID-19 in order to reduce the stigma. The moment we start you know, stigmatizing them, then he becomes imposed into depression mental health problems, more social boycott, more social ostracization. So do not attach that family, the person who has been affected by COVID-19 by the word COVID-19. So minimize, that is the next thing, minimize watching, reading, listening to news about COVID-19. Because what has happened, all the TVs, all the newspapers, stop or at least minimize watching, reading or listening to COVID-19 because that causes anxiety distress. Only seek information from the trusted sources, from government authorities or WHO, because that is going to be the correct information and you should take steps only on that basis. Do not listen to rumor mongering. Do not attach any importance to the WhatsApp messages or listen to all kind of news, crap which is being meted out on TV and newspapers and seek up to date information. Get updates at specific times, and the sudden and near constant stream of news can cause anyone to feel worried. So, in fact, many of us, we have stopped even looking at the newspapers or listening to the news about it because that causes anxiety. So, listen, but only minimal. Then get the facts. Don't listen to the rumors. Misinformation will always take place, particularly with the social media, the misinformation goes and gather information from WHO site rather than from any other information and they will minimize your fears, protect yourself and be supportive. Assist others. Check by telephone or neighbors or people. It's always a good idea to, you know, COVID-19, one of the positive points is it has families closer also. Now people sit on the dining table 
meals together. People ring up their near and dear ones, whom they we have. At least COVID-19 has given us this thing that we have started approaching them. So try to talk to them by telephone, talk to the neighbors and so on, and working together as a one community. And try to find out opportunities to amplify positive stories rather than negative stories. That is going to encourage people. Otherwise, negative stories are going to depress people. So stories of people who have recovered from COVID-19 or who have supported a loved ones and are going to share their experience. Try to listen to such stories. Honor care carers and healthcare workers who are supporting, who are really affected in your community. So talk to such people. Acknowledge the role they, the, the frontline workers have played in COVID-19. Similarly, for the healthcare workers who are playing that role, they are under a lot of pressure. And it's quite normal to feel that way in this situation. Stress is going to take place in the health workers. So to manage your uh, mental health and psychosocial well-being. So this is the message for the healthcare workers that you will be under a lot of pressure, but manage your mental health and psychological well-being because this is important. If you do not have good health, you will not be able to manage others. So you have to have good health. Take care of yourself at this time and try and use helpful coping strategies like having a lot of rest, a lot of respite between shifts. Don't go on continuously. You become vulnerable. You must take healthy food, physical activity, exercise, and stay in confidence. Avoid using unhelpful coping strategies like use of avoid tobacco, avoid alcohol, and other drugs. In the long run, they will worsen the mental situation. So for health line, health care workers, this is these are the instructions. Take care of yourself uh, at this time. And the COVID-19 outbreak is a unique and you have to, it's unprecedented. So you have to work out strategies. So you are the person most likely to know how to de-stress. So try to de-stress. Play games sometime, play anything else, what and keep yourself psychologically well. And some healthcare workers, of course, will experience uh, unfortunate experience, but uh, and this will be very challenging. So try to stay connected with your loved ones. Again, as I said, at the cost of reputation, relationship and communication are the two most important things. You with them or through digital digital means, through video calling, through Skype. Maintain contact. Colleagues, your manager, other people for your support. And share messages with people with intellectual or psychological disabilities. So this communication is extremely important. <coughs> and then know how to provide support to people who are affected. You must do that. Keep them well informed those who are affected by COVID-19. The stigma associated with mental health, sometimes, you know, people will have reluctance to seek support for both COVID-19 and mental health conditions. The team leaders or managers in health facility keep, who are the managing the things? So keep the staff protected from stress, mental health. Ensure to keep the current situation will not go away overnight. In fact, COVID-19, the effects of COVID-19, let me make it, I, I, you may think that I'm being uh, too, uh, uh, you can say hyperbole. The effects of COVID-19 are going to stay for the next 100 years. Our lifestyle will have to undergo it. And we will have to live with this new normal. So this condition is not going to improve overnight. And ensure that good communication is established to with the staff. The staff who is working under you, you must have good relationships. Rotate workers. So do high stress and lower stress. Keep on rotating them. And partner inexperienced workers with their more experienced. So what happens in a team? If there are two, three people who are inexperienced, put two, three people who are experienced so that the team has some people who are experienced. The buddy system or the friend system, which provides you know, support. And you know, always that outreach personnel enter the community in pairs, not single in pairs. Then 
implement flexible schedule for those who are impacted directly or if you have a family member have a flexible schedule for them so they are the people who are feeling distressed because some family member has contracted it. and ensure that you build in time for colleagues to provide social you know support and also your staff should be aware of where and how they can access mental health and psychosocial support so if your staff finds that a patient is having mental problems he should know where to contact and whom to contact and this must also be in the case of managers and team leaders who are facing similar stress themselves they must also take care and one more thing i will say the managers if you are the manager you must act as a role model for your staff so whatever you do it is going to follow uh, down the line also so what is it is called walk the talk if you want say, your subordinates to work in the fashion as you want you should have to show the way you have to also do that so practice is more important than preaching so all the respondents that nurses ambulance drivers volunteers case identifiers teachers community leaders workers in quarantine sites or how to provide basic emotional thing you must give a orientation program to all these people and urgent things you know sometimes delirium psychosis severe anxiety depression this is an emergency with it immediate and appropriate trained and qualified staff must be deployed in these situations where you are having such kind of emergencies and then generic things psychotropic medics medicine should be available everywhere and people having long -term mental health conditions or having epilepsies seizures they need immediate medication so you have to keep that in mind also now for those who are caring for the children help children find positive ways such of overcoming this fear so everyone's own emotionals so you have to provide creative facilities drawing so that their energies are channelized towards that and they overcome the fear and they will feel very relieved if you are able to communicate with them and keep children close to their family if considered safe and avoid separating children and their careers as much as their carers as much as possible and if a child is separated then ensure that alternative care is provided some by the side of the child always also ensures that during periods of separation regular contact with the peers is maintained or with the carer is maintained it can be either say you can have a telephone call or a video call or some kind of communication so this is how you have to ensure that the children have to be involved in some activity or the other and encourage people to play and socialize with others during times stress and crisis you know sometimes children need more attachment more engagement and more demanding so that you must provide and address sometimes the if your children are having concerns address them together that also eases rather than addressing them separately then finally the older people you know older people who are those in isolation or having decline dementia they become very much anxious they are angry stressed and so on so you must provide emotional and practical Uh, support such uh, through informal channels families health professionals ngos share simple facts of to these old people what is going on and give clear information how to reduce the risk of infection in words social people the, the older people must understand that this is the message for them. this we are going to remain away from the covid 19 and repeat the information whenever necessary so this is how you do that engage family members with the, with older people to help them for washing their hands and any health condition then you make sure that all the men to the older people on time and activate your social contacts also so that whenever assistance is needed and be prepared to know in advance where and how to get practical help like for example calling a taxi having food delivered having medical care 
these are all elementary things but they help in giving a lot of support both uh, psychological and social support and the regular medicines which are required for the old people make a stock of at least two weeks of medicines so these medicines are absolutely necessary for example i remember uh, i remember in goa nafisa ali one of the great actresses of our times she represented to the government because because that was lockdown period she was not getting medicine for her cancer she was suffering she is suffering from cancer she was not able to get the medicines so the stock had already so you must keep a two weeks stock of the medicine with the people and learn simple daily physical exercises to perform yoga or meditation meditation and so on in the in the quarantines and keep regular routines as much as possible regular exercising cleaning daily chores and so on and keep telephonic contact email contacts media contact video conferencing contact and finally those who are in isolation you must stay connected with sir keep your personal daily routines if health authorities have recommended limiting your physical social contacts you the, the people in isolation can remain connected through telephone so basically it boils down to two things communication and relationships and pay attention to the needs of such people healthy activity should be there exercising sleep in fact i'm going to talk about the six quotients in a little while from now before i end the session and public health agencies etc all over the world are working towards for these old people and uh, you know the updates etc uh, you must get the who website and listen to such things i was i was going to tell you the six questions which are extremely important so let me talk about these six questions according to psychologists there are six types of questions first should be made for all of us to incorporate those suitably in our or in the vision of the organization where we are working the one number one intelligence question intelligence question is your knowledge you know there are for any able officer three things are important one is called knowledge second is called skills third is called attitude ksa it's called so intelligence quotient is your knowledge the second is so intelligence quotient how do you increase that reading books getting more and more knowledge going through e books reading newspapers not the book but getting your knowledge so improvement of knowledge okay, tomorrow your knowledge should be you are having today that is improving your intelligence quotient second is emotional quotient emotional quotient is getting connected emotionally with your relations as much as possible try to be near to your near and dear ones your son your daughter your spouse your your workers your subordinates your colleagues so emotional you get involved those people who have a high emotional quotient even if they have less intelligence quotient they are more successful in life so emotional quotient is very important the third is physical quotient physical quotient means physical fit you must do some exercises to make remain physically fit fourthly spiritual quotient that is spiritually that is going out and helping others ethically how many of us even knew the migrants who were traveling on the roads even though the, we did not know them but we came out to help those people that is called spiritual spiritual doesn't mean that you go on himalayas and do meditation there spiritual means going out and helping others ethically the fifth is social portion neighbors our distant relatives whom we do not contact so networking is something which is also very important and lastly how do you meet adverse situations like covid 19 if you are able to come out of it then that means your adversity quotient is very high so day by day during covid 19 we have been given an opportunity to improve our iq because we remained at homes we learned many new things we read so many books our knowledge was increasing emotionally we were all now sitting as a family sitting together on the dining table eating food together which was not possible earlier so that is emotional quotient seeking the welfare of our our neighbors our colleagues emotionally getting connected to them third is 
doing some exercise or the other for improving our physical health because immunity can only be built up by physical health and for meeting a pandemic immunity is absolutely necessary the fourth is ethical that is moving or going out and helping others who are in need so that is the ethical side or the spiritual side the social quotient is those people whom we were not even even we had forgotten those people our distant we were not talking because the letter the time of sending letters is gone we are now doing everything on telephone or on social media but we keep on forgetting those people who are our relatives who are the people who need care so going out and getting socially connected is the social quotient and the last is meeting the adversities so that is uh, called the improving the adversity quotient so improve these six quotients and i can tell you with great confidence that you will be able to live with this pandemic much more easily fight with this pandemic much more easily you will be able to provide the psychosocial care to all those people who are the needy people so let me now come to the the last part of my presentation which is what are the lifestyle changes that we need to bring about because of this Can you see lifestyle after COVID nineteen? No, sir. No. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, now we. Okay, okay. So lifestyle changes after COVID nineteen. I hope every one of you is able to see that. Yes, sir, it's full, sir. Okay. So let me start. Uh, with the pre-COVID nineteen scenario, why I'm taking you through the journey of how we have travelled from pre-COVID nineteen to COVID nineteen and then pass after that. So it was a world of waste and wonder, poverty and plenty. That was the situation in pre-COVID nineteen. Huge amount of waste. So it was wonderful. People came up with companies to trade across all lands. More and more companies came. Slowly and slowly, they swelled and got bigger than what we could even imagine. So there was a race. Everyone was, you know, running in a race, and they were trying to bring more companies, make more production, make more spending, more consumerism, more waste. We always had our wants and needs, but now it has become become so quick that we could have anything we could dream of in a day with a click. so you know with the with the electronic media or ict technology we were able to get anything we wanted sitting at home but just clicking the thing this was the covid pre covid 19 scenario and we were having lot of greed and gandhi ji also said there is enough on this world for everyone's need but not everyone's greed so if we could live with true two trousers and two shirts we were going in in a purchasing spree to the malls we were purchasing more trousers we were purchasing more shirts our wardrobes were swelling up so this was the scenario in pre covid 19 families were talking to each other on on railway stations everyone was looking at the mobile phone nobody was talking to the person who was sitting beside him the work life balance broke everyone had a mobile phone in his hand he was too engrossed in it but mobile phone was there but he was no they stopped playing outside became too introvert they forgot how to run in the open spaces tourism that is spending reached its peak you know in in japan there are some people if you google you will find that they have stopped purchasing things they have sold off their belongings they keep only the minimum thing which is required one bed one chair and the minimum food articles one set of clothes the consumerism in the pre covid scenario had reached its peak and every day the nature was getting affected was getting affected the sky got thicker and thicker because of polluted air and you could not see the stars we were all in cars mad rush on the cars mad rush in the airplanes we start filling up the sea with plastic fish life 
other marine life, you know, they were killed. We were destroying our earth. Nature started to bleed itself. We smoked, we gambled, lobbies were formed, and we were having too much of ego. Ego is the I. Unethical, they have an inflated ego. So we became too egoistic. No feelings for one another. No emotional concern for others. No social belongingness. We turned into unethical human beings. The of COVID-19 then started. This was going on. And then the virus came. It led to a scare all around. People hid themselves in the, inside their houses with fear. Anxiety was writ large on their faces. And the fear of death loomed large. People lost jobs, lost wages, earnings came down. People, they, they, they changed from the factories. Their, their salaries were curtailed to half and so on. This was the effect of COVID-19. Restrictions of movement, lockdown, curfews. People were confined to the houses. This was during the COVID-19. The virus harassed us completely. And this led to requirements for health, hygiene. What were that? Masks, washing of hands, sanitizers, distancing, the restriction on delivery of food and other articles. They had to be, they could not be brought and we had to get everything prepared at gymnasiums, swimming malls, swimming pools, malls, everything was closed and mental peace was taken away. Are you able to get my PPT absolutely clearly? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So the question before everyone is, can I survive? No control over this virus. No vaccine. Still no vaccine. A great amount of anxiety and what is in store for future, which I told you about anxiety led to the mental disorders. And angry over what was happening. And there was a feeling of taking revenge, even though the virus was not visible to us, but we were hating it. We wanted to take revenge against the virus. And there was a feeling of retaliation against the country which gave birth to this virus. Is it? Overnight, people started hating because it was that country which brought that virus to us, which made our life miserable. So the learn now let us understand. This was the effect of COVID-19. What are the learnings? Positive things. COVID-19 has all got a silver lining. Come to learn that actually COVID-19 is probably a blessing in disguise for many reasons. It has got its flip side. There is no doubt. I have talked about the flip side. Take care of the psychosocial uh, support system for people. But there is some positive also. A lot of learnings have come out of common hedge against this virus. So social distancing, even though it others have increased, but it has brought the families closer to us. The members of the family staying inside their houses, we spend more time with the family, which was not taking place earlier. Everyone was leaving from their houses. And now they are brought together. We have come to realize that we can live without too much of consumerism. We have to come to now differentiate between what is a need and what is a greed. If two, two trousers are sufficient, what is the need for purchasing more trousers? So there is a shift now from materialistic to non-materialistic way of living. Earlier, money was considered to be the most important thing. Not any longer. Now survival is more important. Getting to live is more important. Our needs have come down. So we should actually thank Mr. COVID for bringing about a change in our lives. And we have become more empathetic. So we have started donating to PM Care Fund. We have started worrying and caring for the migrants, for domestic help. Those who people who were coming for our, our houses, domestic servants, workers, we have started caring for them by giving them salaries, by giving them, even though they have not been able to come to the houses. So this is how empathy has come to play a very important part because of COVID-19. And we have started getting rid of the negative things like ego, greed, anger, attachment, jealousy. And these have been replaced by news managers now. So old managers have been fired and new managers have been hired. What were the old 
is ego, greed, anger, attachment, jealousy. Now the new managers who are taking control of us, compassion, kindness, love, togetherness, forgiveness, empathy, etc. So we are in turn becoming better human beings. And human spirit is ultimately prevailing. And suddenly we don't feel the urge to buy anything more than what is required for us. And therefore our savings have also increased. And people have started doing the house themselves. Isn't it? How many of us have started cooking? How many of us have, because domestic help is not coming. So we have to take everything ourse ourselves. We have learned new recipes for preparing food. All these things have started. Whatever we used to order from outside, now we are preparing in the houses itself. And there is a less dependence on domestic help. And we are now giving more and more went to our new talents, culinary talents, our hobbies, painting, and uh, you know, reading books, and all kind of hobbies which are there, stamp collection. We have started realizing that cleanliness is next to godliness. Because now we have to clean our hands every, every hour in order that this virus does not get contracted. In regime has this is again a positive side. If we remain clean, it's a positive side. COVID-19 is positive, is there. Sanitizing, washing hands, distancing, masks, etc. So now we can live with lesser things. So last two months, people have been able to manage things from their monthly budgets. In fact, save money also to a large extent. Though there is a downturn in the economy. That, of course, is absolutely clear. That economy has gone for a nosedive. But still, still, people have managed pretty well. Because less visits to mall, less visits to hotel, less unnecessary shopping, and we have come to distinguish needs and wants. We have started giving more importance to the vegetarian food than non vegetarian food. People are actually turning during this COVID-19 more and more vegetarian. And technology has been come to be utilized in the best possible manners. So the smartphones, the TVs, laptops, working from home has become a new normal. So now we, have, we are able to appreciate the positive impact of the ICT. This particular platform on which I'm talking to you is also a virtual platform. And then travel has been restricted. So the scares, scare is still there. But as it will go down and as vaccine becomes available, then people's fears will also go away. And there is also now a great demand for, for the local product rather than imported stuff. So this is a call given by Mr. Modi, vocal for the local. So we are now ostracizing goods by China and other things. We are giving more encouragement to be things which are manufactured in this country. And people are becoming spiritually more active. Spiritually active means helping others, more empathy, compassionate, considerate, listening heart. And family participation is more. That is playing together, listening to music, art, singing songs, and maintaining placid lifestyle. So happiness, we have come to realize that happiness we can achieve without much reason. So that is a much positive thing. Living, sitting together, playing together, singing together, we have come to realize that happiness comes from these things. It doesn't require any reason. Very interesting. Cuba. So Cuba, 1889, Russia was supplying high-speed diesel at very low subsidized rates so that Cuba remained within their fold, within their control. That is communism. But when Russia was not able to support Cuba, United States of America tried to support Cuba by offering less cost diesel, subsidized diesel. Cuba did not go for that. Cuba decided that they will move on bicycles rather than taking help from United States of America. So they that happiness is not dependent on power of spending. Principles were more important. So during the lockdown, people have remained indoors and cars have gathered dust. Skies have started breathing. Nature has started repairing itself. Ozone layer has started repairing itself. People have started playing, dancing, running and baking inside their homes. And they have started smiling and clapping 
to say thank you to the health workers. That also is a positive. So six questions we have already talk, talked about that we have. Now the post-COVID scenario, let me tell you. COVID-19 will be around for 100 years. The effects of this. The virus will go. The virus will disappear, but its effects will be around for a long, long time. It's a global tragedy, but it's a historic tragedy. It is going to change our lives, our jobs, our offices. And even when we find a cure for COVID-19, we will still prefer to stay with the world we have found, new world which we have found, rather than what we have left behind. So old habits will go away and COVID is going to change our lives considerably, both individually and collectively. Office will totally change. Definition of office will become different. Office will not become relevant now. Because even in a lockdown, you could not, could not open the offices. They were all closed. It was illegal to open the offices. So the importance of office will go away. So many of the companies, Infosys, Google, they have asked their employees to work from their homes. So we won't require an office. So there will be no need for paying huge rents for the office when the employees can work from their homes. And once you re realize that the jobs can be done remotely, then we will not like to be stuck up in office paying huge rents for both office and residences just to go to the office because we will work everything from the home itself. This would mean that the only thing which is required is you should have a strong Wi-Fi. Google and Facebook have already announced employees do not need to come to an office until 2021. So there will be a greater between the employer and employees. Similarly, the jobs will be done remotely. You just net. So what happened in New York, millions of people after COVID-19, they went back to their homes, stayed with their families. They said, why do I have to spend money on rent? I will stay with my family in, in the suburban areas. So cities will also undergo change. People will start realizing that they don't have to travel through traffic, through the noise and the pollution. They will be able to work very closely near the exciting nature. So they will go to farms, beaches, towns, and so on. So Delhi, New York, and even other cities will not be the same. They will have a lot lesser traffic. The talent definition will also change. Now we will, people will be able to be hired sitting at home. So even if you, if you are in Indonesia, Iceland, and Zimbabwe, Google can hire you straight away from your bedroom. All that is required is a talent. Now you don't need a US visa. You can be, you don't have to immigrate. You can do it from your home. So this is how everything will change. You will become more tech savvy, start using technology more and more, and processes will become more robust. Less visit to the big gatherings. You will not go to the concerts, rallies, malls. Again, a powerful thing. Travel will be restricted, international and domestic travel. The travel and tourism industry will definitely be hit. And airline you will not be moving out of their homes much. And that means less spending you'll be able to save. Nature heat takes less vehicles on the road, so less petrol consumption, so less dependence on fossil fuels, cleaner air, and biodiversity will also get a boost. You know, from Chennai, I was never not able to see the mountains. After COVID-19 came and there was lockout, one could see the mountains so easily. Wildlife will also coexist easily. You could see many wildlife moving on the roads because there, there was no movement of vehicles on the road. Air will become breathable. Mountains will become visible. Delhi, which is regarded as a gas chamber. So asthma, lung-related diseases will come down. And our carbon footprint will also come down. So nature will start healing. Less consumerism. People will turn towards spirituality. Their needs will shift. And they will play more indoor games, films, entertainment. So Netflix and other uh, YouTube, they will become more relevant. They will learn new culinary skills, reading, stamp collection, writing books and articles. They will become spiritual advancement will be there. People will turn more spiritual, more helpful, more ethical. And happiness. Now they will be settled for more happiness than money. So happiness will become second, will become more important than money. Money will become second. So even if we have less money, less things, we will still be happy. So more of joy 
less of pleasure pleasure and money joy is something which you get the happiness so as i told you try to develop ksa the three way process to complete learning one is called knowledge one is called skill and one is called attitude if you possess these things then you are an able officer so the attitude knowledge and skills wherever they intersect that is called ability so this ability is is going to help you in moving towards achieving these kind of things which were otherwise considered very difficult so psychosocial care will only come when you possess the knowledge you possess the skills and you possess the correct attitude and we have discussed all these three things in great details so let me uh, at the end of this uh, let me talk about the summary so how the world will be after covid 19 so this has you know placed the whole world at a standstill and there is a lockdown and what is certain is that people are learning valuable lessons from this crisis and after covid 19 the world is going to change for the better you know aristotle the famous philosopher he said it is during our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light so therefore this is perhaps the right time to look ahead at expected improvements in the post covid world and you know people now have learned to live with the bare essential things because all things are closed and we have started realizing that there is no point in having consumerism pollution will come down so our planet our life will become more healthy and people will give more priority to a simple life a rewarding lifestyle and we will be able to protect the earth and the next generation to drive a majority of the life choices and we will have a family oriented society they will work together assist together in household chores along with caring caring for the children and the elderly people and the measures which need to be taken for caring and elderly people or the health side workers i have already discussed at great length so post covid mindset will actually bring about a protection for the family so going for an upgraded health care system because of this pandemic lot many new infrastructure in the health sector has been created so digital health technologies like contactless thermometers are on the rise improving patient care it has also created lot of awareness about cleanliness and people are having wearing masks maintaining distance washing hands frequently and so on so the protection of the family health has become everyone's primary concern and finally the digitally education will undergo a great change now the classes will all be uh, in many, many places digitally structured so education is something which is going to be you know turned to digital digital things because people not like to send them to schools and home centric work culture will come so this kind of social distancing uh, cannot be relaxed until a vaccine comes so a large number of people may not be able to return to the offices and work from home and video conferencing that kind of culture will be more and more so uh, lastly uh, the conclusion is so as people work together in breaking the chain of this virus infection a better world is emerging the tough times will pass away no doubt about it but we will become more wiser and we will become more compassionate and caring for others and we have understood now that there is a need for taking precautions and steps for future contingencies and it took a virus a corona virus to make us understand each other and bring people together sometimes you have to become sick to become better we call it a great realization thank you very much if there are any questions uh, i'll be able to